So let's spend a few minutes talking about average or expected values for a binomial distribution. If you recall the way a binomial distribution um, is set up, the way we've defined it, it allows us to answer a question such as, um, let's say that a couple decides to have five kids, probability of a girl. 0.52 and we want to be able to answer what's the probability of having exactly um, out of those five kids maybe having exactly three girls so the formula that we've um, discussed in previous videos that would help us solve that like this. Um, and so this will tell us what the probability is of a random event, for example, where x is the number of girls. So it's x is, in general, the number of successes. So let's say that we're saying we have exactly three girls, and we call that a success. And the probability of a girl, in this case, is 0.52. So if I wanted to know what that exact, well, what's the probability of having exactly three girls out of five kids, we could plug it into this formula. Um, notice that this formula really has one, two, three inputs. Um, and so typically we would use binom binomial PDF on your calculator and we would plug in the number of trials, the probability of a success, and um, the number of successes we wish to get the probability um, for. So we ended up with the 5.52 and 3. Um, and this will give us the probability of having exactly three girls. If we want to know the prob if we want to know the probability of having 0, 1, two, three, four, or five girls out of those five kids by known PDF. By default, if we just simply said by known PDF and put in a five and a 0 0.52, he'll generate that entire list. So let's take two minutes to plug that in. <coughs> and that value, when we look at it, gives us 0.324. So the probability of having exactly three girls is 0.32396. Uh, so I'll just round this off at 0.324. Um, and if I want to know the probability of not just three girls, but the probabilities for having of having 0, 1, 2, etc. Then I can leave off that 3 at the end. So what I'm going to do is um, I have a couple of choices. What I'll do is recall that entry. So I'll say second entry and leave off the 3. And so we end up with a list. And what I'll do is I'll store that list, let's say we store it into list 4. So I'm going to go ahead and hit store and it will take whatever answer was generated and I'll tell it to store it into list 4. And what you're going to see is that over here this list gets populated.
larger so that we can see what's going on. If you look at list 4, the 0 0.025, 0 0.138, 0 0.299, and the 0.32396. So these are the probabilities of having 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 girls. Um, 0, 1, 2, 3. Notice that this is the probability of having exactly 3 girls. And that's what we came up with here. So either we can do it for one particular success or for any possible range of successes. The other thing that we can do with the binomial PDF function in your calculator is that from the very beginning we could have said um, given that we have five trials and the probability of a success of being 0.52 um, if we just don't put in a value um, for some specific number of successes, it will give us the complete list. That's one way of getting it. Or if we go back into it, and do it again, but this time we put in the values that we wish to have binomial PDF calculate um, the probabilities for. So I'll put it in as a list. So I'll go second, get the left parentheses, and let's say that I go 0, comma, 1, comma, 2. And I'm looking for this to give me three probabilities. To probability having zero girls, one girl, or two girls out of the five kids. And I'll paste this. And what you'll see is that I end up with these probabilities that are here. If I go ahead and um, scroll over to the right, you'll see that I ended up with three different values. To make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to go to second mode then just show maybe three decimal places. Second quit, get out of this, and then repeat second entry, and it shows those three values. Okay, so now what we want to do is using binome PDF as a tool, and we have a probability distribution, we have random variables, right? The X are the random variables. It's the number of girls you could have out of five kids. What is the expected value? If you were to go into any particular home, um, you could go and um, do the math here. Each home is going to give you some number of girls. We're assuming that for each one of these homes, there are five kids, you may see that there are two girls, three girls, three, two, one, three, four, two, etc. What you would find is that if you did the summation on those values and divided it by the count, you'd end up um, with an average of 2.6. So out of each home, there's going to be five kids, five kids, five kids. And on average, the number of girls would be 2.6. Um, so how do we know that? How do we get the average number of girls? What is the expected value? Um, if we plug this in to our calculator, we know that something like this, list 1 and list 2, um, the expected value for that random variable. If we multiply each one of them by their probability or frequency, um, we would get the expected value. So if we multiply 0 times 0 0.25, 1 times 0 0.38, plus 2 times 0 0.29, plus 3, right? If we do that, we'll end up with an average or expected value. The other way of doing it 
is just simply to say one of our stats um, L1, L2, and it would do that same work for us. If you plug those in, you'll see that the expected value for the binomial distribution is 2.6. Actually, what is it? 0 0.025, 0 0.138. So if you plot those, let's make that, it's not 0.255, it's actually 0 0.025. So if you plot those, um, you would end up with a description meaning the random variable can take on 0, 1, 2, 3, only discrete values. Um, the other one was 0 0.138. The next one was 0.299. And the next one was a 0.324. value of 
of a function. Um, it's going to, we can use what we learned in a previous video. So, what we'd like to do is go back up and find the expected value of the random variable minus the mean squared. Um, so for each one of these, what I want is the zero minus the mean, zero minus the mean, which we've determined to be 2.6 squared. And then I want to subtract one minus the mean squared. And then I'll do that for each one of these. So the 0, the 1, the 2, the 3, the 4. And then finally the 5. Um, so the first one will be a negative 2.6 squared. The next one will be 1 minus that. So what is that? Negative 1.6 squared. The next one will be 2 minus 2.6, so that's a negative 0 0.6 squared. This one is a 0 0.4 squared, and this one is a 1.4 squared, um, and then a 2.4. If I take all of those values, sum them up, um, actually you take all of those values, um, and then multiply each one of them by their frequency, I will get the variance. So what we're going to do, let's go down here, is let our calculator do our work for us. So I'm going to call that top list, list 3. The frequency is still list 2, and I'll do a 1 var stats. List three and list two, where list three is going to be those lists or that list of values. Um, and so let's take a look at that. So let's generate our three lists. Um, we have list one we're interested in, list two, uh, and then list three finally, which would be um, list three would be those values that correspond to um, the differences squared that will help us determine the variance. So list one, list two, and list three. So list one, zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. List 2. Um, so what I'll do is go back and redo um, one of my calculations. generated all six. So this one here is going to give me all six. I'll store that result into list two. And we should see that get populated. So now we have the random variables and the probability on each one of those random variables. And finally I need list three. Um, so I'm going to go back into the editor. And what I know is that over here in list three, so I'm gonna go up to the top and work on the entire list. List three, what do we say list three is going to be? It's going to be um, those values that are in list one minus a 2.6 and then square that. 
So list 3 is going to be those values that are in list 1 minus a 2.6 and square that. And that's going to generate the list of values. So now I can use that list 3 along with the frequency to figure out what the variance is. Um, so let's go back in stats, uh, calculate single variable statistics, and we're going to use list 3, list 2 for the probabilities, calculate, and we get a value of 1.248. is the expected value of that difference squared. Um, 1.248. So that is, in fact, the variance. And to get the standard deviation, I'll take the square root of 1.248. Um, and that value should be 1.1. Um, so given that we take this that we've seen here as a normal, we'll say that under certain conditions it approaches a normal distribution, um, you can say that using the empirical rule, 95% of the time you would expect um, the number of girls you find in each one of those homes with five kids, the, the count on the number of the girls to be mu plus or minus two sigma, um, right? So to be within this interval, mu minus two standard deviations and mu plus two standard deviations. Um, so something like this, 2.6 minus 1.117. plus 1.117, roughly 3 point, um, I'll call this 71, um, oops, 1 point, um, 2.6 minus 1.1 is uh, 1.5, and then if you do the addition, it's going to be 3.7. So 95% of the time, we assume that this follows the rules of a normal distribution. Um, you'd expect the number of girls to be somewhere between 1.5 and 3.7. So if you found a home with four girls or five girls, that would be highly unusual. And if you found a home with one or zero girls, we would consider that to be highly unusual. So now we can get the mean. ideas of expected value. We can also get the variance using the idea of expected value. There is an easier way to get both of those. Um, the easier way to get the expected value. Um, if, it, if we know that it's a binomial distribution, we could use these two rules here, the square root of NPQ. Um, so we'll save kind of the more in-depth discussion of where that's coming from, but those are the rules that would allow us to get to the answers more directly. So if we had done this, we would have seen right away that for N equals 5 girls, probability of a girl being 0.52 you would expect then the average number of girls to be 5 times 0.52 or 2.6 and you would expect the standard deviation around that mean, the variance around that mean um, to be 5 for n we're going to take the square root of these values 
is 0.52 or 0.48. And if we plug those values into the calculator, what you'll get is a 1.117 for the standard deviation. So using these formulas, we can get the mean and the standard deviation for any binomial distribution. Um, there are certain conditions, um, but let's just do some of the mechanics first before we talk about what those conditions are. So let's say that um, a shooter, a free throw shooter, and um, yeah, a basketball, um, an NBA player, and Steph Curry. Is 
this considered unusual? And if we know what the standard deviation is around the mean, um, then we can make a statement about whether or not it's unusual. values that are in this interval where it's the mean plus or minus two standard deviations and if it's not in that interval we're going to call it unusual that's the 95 percent um, interval so we've determined the mean is 106 but what we don't yet know is what the standard deviation is um, but we have a simple formula that's going to get us there and the standard deviation um, it's just N, P, and then Q. This is the same thing as just saying N, P, and then 1 minus P. Those are exactly the same thing. It's just simpler to call it Q versus 1 minus P. It comes up in a number of other contexts also. It's just simply Q. So if we do the math on this, N is the number of trials. P is the probability of a success. And Q is the probability of a failure or 1 minus 0.89 and we take the square root of that and you should get 3.43 for the standard deviation so that tells us that we can ex expect 95 percent of the time um, minus two standard deviations and then 106.8 plus two standard deviations 3.43 and in fact let's not round off too early you want to keep at least three to four significant digits um, carry them along and then round off at the final with the final answer that you present um, so the interval that we come up with is 100 to 114. Um, if we uh, just round off, um, I think the original values were 99.94 and 113.66. Um, so those as far as number of free throws or numbers of free throws um, if we round off then what we're really looking at then is somewhere between 100 and 114 um, free throws is what we're going to use as the boundary for what's considered um, unusual and so with 113 that wouldn't be unusual that was how this question started makes 113 is that considered right is that number considered unusual and so based on this since 113 is in the interval um, it's actually in the 95 percent occurrence interval what's usual then 113 is not uh, outside of the interval is 
these formulas were, were derived, I can do kind of a quick uh, sketch to show where these values are coming from, but it's actually an easy formula to use. It's certainly much, much longer to to prove. It'll take a little bit of time and it goes beyond the scope of this class, but I can at least point to a, a sketch of a 